Hello again. So we're going to extend our project a little bit and create a new class and have two instances of each one of those classes start talking to each other. If you remember in our project, we have this object called die. Die is a movie clip that has six particular frames. And we are able to show the side of a die based on each one of these particular uh, frames inside of our movie clip. So let's go ahead and create a class for our die here. So I'm going to right click this and we're going to um, going to modify its properties and create a new class in this case called die. We can right click and say edit class and then let's go ahead and save this as die and start let's start putting some code in and defining particularly how this class is going to work. So we're going to go ahead and put in our stop action since this does have six frames we want to, we don't want it to necessarily play all of those. And then we want to have some way of triggering that this die is going to work. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and create a publicly accessible method, which is called roll die. And we will not return anything with that. Oop, I forgot my function keyword. I was wondering why that was so short. All right. And then the next line, we will say, um, you know, this go to and stop, and we want to put in a random number here since this is a die. So we'll do math dot ceiling math dot random times six. Okay, so if we remember, um, when we're dealing with random numbers, we want to create a number that's going to range from one to six. So we're creating a math random number which gives us a decimal from zero to one, and we multiply that by six. Math ceiling will take whatever number we have and automatically just raise it up to the next to the next level if it has a decimal. So this will give us the numbers one, two, three, four, five, or six. And we're taking that number and we're assigning that to go to and stop, which will then take us to that particular frame. So let's go back out to um, to our project here, and let's create an instance of that die here on our project. We're going to go to our properties and we're just going to call this. Uh, we'll call this. Uh, Call us die one. So now we have that object here. We can now go inside of our document class, dice out, and assign an event listener onto the instance um, die one. Let's go ahead and create our create listeners method, which we're going to create just for private inside of this private function, create listeners, which will return nothing. And we want to access the roll button um, movie clip. So we'll do roll button, add event listener, mouse event dot click. And then what we're going to do is um, just to say um, roll, let's call it a roll function. So then we, well actually let's change that. Let's not do roll, let's do something that's more descriptive. Let's call this um, button click. So create a public function button click which will accept a mouse event which will also return nothing. And then in here we're going to tell die1 to roll die. So we've created our listeners here. So we've added an event listener for mouse click onto the roll button, which will then execute the function button click. Button click will then tell die one to roll whenever the die is rolled. So we save this and run. You now see that the die is being rolled every single time we click the object. So what we're going to do in the next episode is start working with how we can transfer more information back and forth between the objects or the data that's inside of a class from something that's outside of it.